Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Vitaly Neymer, and I am the Grandmaster Resident here at the St. Louis Chess Club. Um, I'm going to be here from beginning of this week until the end of March, so for the whole month of March. Um, so I'm very excited to be here. It's my second time being uh, the head coach of the chess club. I don't know if you guys knew, but uh, St. Louis is actually considered the capital of chess in the world, not only in, in the US, but ev even in the world. Uh, some of the most popular chess players come to compete here, pretty much all the world champions uh, like you know, Magnus Carlsen, Vichy Anand, uh, Kramnik, uh, as well as Gary Kasparov just came out of retirement. He, his first chess tournament was here in this chess club. So yeah, so this is kind of like the, the shrine of chess for, for chess people. Anyway, so what are we going to do today? So today uh, we are going to continue on the same topic as was our first lesson today. So in our first lesson, I was uh, introducing the opening, which is called the dragon, okay? So the dragon, uh, the, the Sicilian dragon is one of the most sharpest uh, chess openings uh, of all times. Lots of sacrifices, lots of combinations, lots of calculations. Uh, forks, pins, mates, uh, stalemates, uh, so lots and lots of exciting uh, stuff going on over there. Obviously there's lots of theory uh, involved if you do want to take the dragon into the next level. Um, but yeah, so today, uh, on our second part today for the advanced class, I wanted to show you uh, how uh, a few games in the dragon, uh, how to play the dragon with the black color. In this game, um, uh, Judy Pogo was uh, was playing uh, white uh, versus uh, versus Magnus Carlsen. So let's see let's see what happens. So e4, and as I said, we are going to start with the Sicilian dragon. C5, knight f3, pawn to d6. This is our main uh, line. Pawn to d4. Pawn takes on d4. Knight takes on d4. Knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4. Knight c3. Usually people who play the dragon, they know those, uh, those uh, moves by heart. So this is move number five. And, uh, you know, so you usually uh, up until move number 10, if you are considered a professional chess, uh, being a professional chess player, uh, professional chess players know up until move number 15, 20, sometimes even 30. Uh, so you can kind of blitz out those, those moves in a theory not to waste any time. So knight c3, g6, so we fan shadow our bishop. Um, bishop e3, bishop g7, f3, preventing knight g4. This is what we discussed today in our uh, previous class. And uh, knight c6, black can technically castle uh, before playing knight c6, uh, but uh, they are both considered as good, good moves. Queen d2, Castle, bishop c4, bishop d7, and long castle. So as you know, one of the main weapons that white has against the dragon is called the Yugoslav attack. And this is when white is starting to create um, some pawn advancement on the uh, king side. And so basically white is going to try to advance all his pawns on the king side to expose black's king and black is going to try to push on the other side. So let's see what happens. So castle and rook to c8. Now as we said in our prior lesson today, uh, if white tries to for example play g4 or h4 and basically ignore black's threat, black can play here this strong move, knight takes on d4. So this is the combination that we saw in our part one. So the queen takes d4, knight takes g4, attacking the queen, and basically this combination he, um, wins a piece. The the That's a good question. And if it takes with the bishop, then we can just take the bishop on c4. Oh. So this is why 
This is why they try to take with the queen because the queen is kind of defending the bishop. Well, you know, obviously, I, Judith Polgo, the strongest woman uh, on the planet, uh, did not fail for it, and she played uh, this move, uh, bishop to b3. So this is the idea to retreat the bishop from the attack of, of the, the rook. Okay, what do we do next? So black to move. What is the idea here with black? Yes, please. So black to move. A6. Okay, so yes, that's a good that, that's a good preparation move, right? Because you have some ideas of playing B5, right? So that's the plan. Now, um, the problem with A6 is that it's probably going to be too slow. Uh, in those kind of uh, positions, in those kind of openings, like the dragon, it's a race. We have to attack as fast as possible. Okay, there is no time to waste any move. For example, white immediately going to play G4 then b5 then h4 and usually it's just going to be too slow for us for black so good good plan but there is another maneuver that black can do and the maneuver is is that black is trying to get this bishop on b3 because this bishop is very very um very strong on this diagonal so how do we do this how do we get this bishop on b3 Yes, please. Um, if we could move the knight to a5, we should be able to like, set up the bishop. Okay, so knight, knight a5, very good. Now, this is probably also going to work. However, I don't really like to put the knight, my knights on the edge of the board. Yeah. Actually, I don't like to put any piece on the edge, at the, at the edge <laughs> of the board, uh, unless it's a king, for example, and I can put it on h8. But let's try to find a better square for this knight, more central square. Yes? Yes, yeah, so knight to e5. Very good. So this is the maneuver. Basically, we can uh, focus on this outpost on c4, and this is where the knight is going to. So this is what was played in the game. So knight to e5, uh, and now uh, white played the g4. Uh, white starts his attack on the king side. Now, the, usually black immediately plays the smooth knight c4, knight c4, but now black decided to unleash uh, his pawns, and um, as we say, this is the tail of the dragon. So, to attack with the tail. So he played immediately b5. Now, at first, it looks like we are just losing a pawn. Right? Because knight takes, bit, b bishop takes, and the other knight is going to take on b5. But that's not so true. We're actually not losing a pawn. And why is that? Why don't we lose a pawn? Yes. Very good. Very good. So if this knight takes on, on b5, for example, bishop takes, takes, then now we can take on f3. Okay? Always ask yourselves in your games, what has changed in the position, you know? So this knight on d4 was defending the f3 pawn. He is no longer there. And so this allows us to, um, to take on f3. Now, when the f3 pawn uh, falls, then the g4 pawn falls as well. And the e4 pawn falls as well, probably in the next few moves. And obviously we are attacking the queen as well. So. <laughs> Not so good for white to take the bait and take on b5. So obviously, uh, Judith saw this uh, in, in the game, and she decided to play g5, attacking, attacking the knight. What do you think that the world champion here did? Black to move. Black to move, yes. Okay, somewhere. So you're saying just to move the knight? Okay, that's one option. Maybe knight h5, right? Maybe knight back, back to e8, kind of more of a defensive solution. But remember, with the dragon, 
we always attack, always push forward. How can we counterattack in this position? Yes. B4, B4 yes. Counterpunch. Nice. Look at this. All, of, all the knights are attacked. Actually, all of the knights are aligned on this diagonal. It's pretty funny. Oh, ah. It's like bingo, right? Exactly. Okay, so B4. Now, if white would have taken this knight, we would take this knight. And if he takes the bishop, we can take his queen. Now, if we... It would a check. That is correct. Now, if he takes the pawn, well, we can take the pawn on F6. And look at this. Now... We destroyed White's castle, right? So White decided not to go for this. So he decided White, what we say, like, 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 like we like to say, he blinked first. And Judith went back with the knight, knight C to E2. Okay, so now we have to move the knight. The knight went to, to H5. Okay, so White to play. Well, how do you think White continued his attack? Yes. That is correct. He can. He can probably. She can probably take the pawn. I don't know why she didn't take this this pawn before, but I assume maybe there was some kind of a problem here. Hmm. What about maybe a five? And then my next move is going to be a four. Maybe I can somehow harass this bishop on b three. Now this this pawn uh, we call this a, a positional sacrifice. Remember, I said that in the dragon the goal is to give away our those of the, those two pawns for those two pawns to expose the position. So sometimes for black it is it's going to be good to give up the, his pawns because it's going to open up the files. It's, it's, we call this a positional sacrifice. So why decided not to take the pawn but to play a different move? Anybody else? Yeah. Pawn f4, you're right. Bam. Okay, attack on the king side. So attacking our knight, the knight went to c4, forking the queen and the bishop. Bishop takes, and rook takes. So this is the, one of the most popular maneuvers uh, that we see in the dragon, uh, exchanging one of our knights for the bishop. Okay, so now white played b3. White decided, okay, this, this rook on c4 is just too annoying. I have to kick it out. So b3, rook went back to c7. And now, okay, how do we continue here with white? We can either play f5 or really... Most of, most of the time, white is trying to open up this H file. But how do we do it? That is a really good question. Yes. Very good. Knight g3. Okay, so the, the idea is that if black takes the knight, for example, pawn takes, and maybe somehow to swing the queen on h2 and checkmate on h7. Pretty clever, huh? Pretty clever. So knight g3 was played. But the deficiency of this move knight g3 is that it's no, no longer defending the c3 square. So Magnus saw that and immediately put the rook on c3. So rook c3 was played, knight takes h5, pawn takes on h5, and white played king to b1. Now king to b1 is a very popular move to be done in the, uh, for white in the dragon, in the Yugoslav attack. Why is that? Well, because usually, because usually black puts his queen on a5 and tries to attack the a2 pawn. So now white is using what we call prophylaxis. Anybody knows what they mean? Everybody, anybody heard about this term in chess? Prophylaxis? Prophy something? Anybody knows what it means? <coughs> yes. Uh, 
Right. So, and then you prevent it. Very good. So prophylaxis and chess is that you need to think about what is my opponent's plan, not my plan, what is he going to do, and how can I prevent this, okay? So, my op so white s is seeing that black wants to play queen a5 and attack his pawn on a2, so he pre-defending the pawn, even before it got attacked. So queen to b1 and queen to a5. Okay, f5. Look at this, the pawns are coming. The pawns are coming, okay. Black to move, what would you do with black? How do we continue our attack with black? We need to bring more pieces. More pieces to the attack. Yes. To H6? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Pawn H6, what do you guys think about this move? Good, not good? Right, it's probably going to expose the king because, well, first of all, it's exposing him, but then I'm also going to lose my pawn. Now, as a rule of thumb, just remember, usually you do not want to move your pawns from the king, in front of the king, because you are going to expose, right? It's pretty much like, think about uh, in your house. Do you want to take off the roof? I don't know. I mean, if it's sunny, it can be nice, right? Right? Uh, like a, like a, su a sunroof or something, but if it's raining and then it's snowing, not such a good idea. So you want to keep him safe. Okay. Yes. Question. All right. Right. The window. Okay. So anybody else? Black to move here. How do we continue the attack of the dragon? Look at this fire over here. This bishop is already attacking. The, the rook is in there. The queen is uh, uh, activated. Who is not in the game? Who is sleeping? Who is sleeping? Somebody did not wake up in the morning. Forgot to wake up. There's a piece that is sleeping. Somebody who I haven't healed before. Um, yes, please. Yeah. Correct. So where would you put the rook? Okay, so we might protect the bishop. Now usually we want to put the rooks on open files. Which file is the most open? The most open, yes. Very good. So rook F to C8. Perfect. So this is what we call in chess a battery. When we align two rooks or a rook and a queen on the same file or maybe sometimes on the same diagonal if it's a rook, uh, if it's a queen and a bishop, we call this a battery. It's much, much more powerful. And we always pay, play powerful chess, right? Alrighty. So rook to c8 uh, was played in the game. Um, now black, uh, black play, white played f6. Bam! He's trying to shut down our, uh, our fire. Now what do we do? Do we take on f6? Do we escape with the bishop? What to do? Raise your hand. Yes. Take on c2. Okay, interesting. Anybody else? Yes? You will just snap the pawn, okay? Yes, I will be proud. The pawn, pawn, grab the pawn, yes. Anybody else? Now, if we take, first of all, if we take on c2, then knight takes on c2. So that's probably not going to work. If we take the pawn, that's exactly what white wants to, to do. He wa he's going to take, take, and now rook to g1. Uh-oh. No roof over our heads, right? So we're going to be very, very exposed, very dangerous. So, Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, finds a counterattack. How can we counterattack and keep the G file closed? Yes, please, in the back. Um, you're saying you go ahead and you go, you Very good, E5, ignore the threat, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, 
Exactly. So now if they take the pawn, sometimes, so this is that did not happen in the game right now, but sometimes this pawn is actually going to be good for us as black. Mm -hmm. Because this is going to uh, count as a defender for black. It's like, it's like a yeah, it's a bit strange. So white played knight f5, moving his knight. Bishop takes f5. E takes f5. And now black to move. Let's see if you can find a way how to expose the white king. How do we get to him? It looks like our fire has been put out. But what to do? We have so many pieces next to the king. So now we are going to look for those sacrifices, right? Yes. Very good. Rook takes e2. Queen takes e2. Rook takes e2. King takes e2. And check. Queen takes a2 check. And now the hunt for the king begins. Tum, tum, tum. Okay, so knight, queen takes e2, queen takes a2, king to d3. Now uh, Magnus decided, no, okay, this pawn is going to fall anyway, so he just moved the bishop to f8. Rook c1. And now d5. Bam, he even uses those two pawns. So pawn to d5, rook h to d1 was played. Queen to b2. What's the, what's the threat of this move, queen to b2? What's the threat? Who knows? Yes. Who knows? Yes. Not exactly. Adi, yeah? E4, very good. There's a checkmate in one move coming. Right, because the queen is controlling all of those squares. So it just looks like a uh, very polite move, just a, just a, just a very uh, quiet move, queen b2. But this, this was a nice idea. Queen b2, so bishop d2 was played. Check. King e2, and now e4. Bishop e3. Queen b2 checked. So how do we, how many, how many passed pawns black has in this position? How many, how many passed pawns do we have in this position? Yes. Four. One, two, three, four. And now black gets another passed pawn. Bam. It's queen and the five passed pawns. Or maybe this is not exactly a pass pawn because still this, this, this pawn is guarding him against two rooks. Well, the queen is just too powerful. Let's see how the game ended. Rook takes d5. And now queen to b8. Now, the idea of queen to b8 is first of all to defend the back rank because we, sometimes we need to be aware of back rank mates. And also to support the push of the pawn, the b pawn. So queen b8, rook c to d1, b3, rook d8, queen b4, check, king f2, b2, we are almost there, we are almost there. Rook b1, white is trying to blockade the pawn, but now we, are, we play queen a5, attacking the rook and the pawn on f5. So queen f5, rook a8, takes, king e1, check, king f2, queen to c7, another one of those tricky moves. What's the idea of queen c7? Who knows, who, who can see the threat of queen c7? Yes. Queen to c2, check, yes, fork. And what if, what if the rook takes on b2? Queen to h2. Very good. A nice skewer. This is what we call the skewer. So queen to c7. Rook had to move to d1. Check. King to e1. And now, how do we win this? What's the easiest win to win this position? Yes. Queen c2, and what's that? Ah, the idea is to promote, right? But then rook b8. If you play queen c2, 
We'll play rook b8 and stop, stop the pawn. Okay, that's a good idea, but not working. There's an easier way how to win this. Uh, yes. Queen g3 check and king e2. Queen f3, king d2. Trying to chase the king. There's an easier way. Yes. Ah, the bishop is pinned, guys. He's pinned. He's just defending the king. Wow, how do we win this easy way? How do we promote? This guy is, is, is not allowing us. We need to get rid of this guy. Yes. Yes, queen to h1, check. Very good. King d e2, and then bam, queen takes d1. And this is where the uh, Judith Pogel resigned because if king takes, well, we make another queen and queen versus a rook, that's an easy win. Okay? Well, queen and we have three pass pawns. So, relatively easy, easy win. So, thank you for listening, guys. This was the dragon. Don't forget, if you have any other questions, in the end of the lesson, you can take some puzzles over, over here. If you have any questions, uh, my card is over there. And uh, don't forget, always play powerful chess.